I found out about my ex-wife's affair the day she was hospitalized, years later, she can't accept my engagement to my fiancé. If ever there was a prize for the most horrible way to learn of your significant other's affair I would probably win it and be in its hall of fame, like so many people in this sub I suddenly found myself as a member of a club that nobody ever wants to be part of. I will never forget the sound of my ex sister in laws voice as she kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry over and over on the phone while I drove home from a week-long business trip. I was confused and had absolutely no idea what she meant, but only after I managed to calm her down somewhat did she inform me that my wife was in the hospital and that I needed to hurry home, my mind went into overdrive as I tried to get more information as well as not crash while I began speeding to get there faster. The only thing she told me was that it was an assault, then cut the call and wouldn't answer when I tried to call her again. A bit of background. My ex and I met in our mid-twenties through a mutual friend at a barbecue. At first she seemed almost too good to be true, not only was she incredibly beautiful and shy and introverted. It took a while for us to officially date, but once it happened, I was over the moon, when we first tried to get intimate, she suddenly started crying, I should have taken this as a bad sign. I freaked out and thought it was something I did, but she apologized the next day and told me she was triggered, as it turns out, two years before meeting me, she was in a long-term relationship with a guy who was abusive both emotionally, physically as well as mentally. He would degrade her during their moments of intimacy and then apologize afterward, she had a flashback but reassured me it had nothing to do with me, so we took things slowly as she was still in therapy. It was tough, but because I loved her, I believed once we got over this, it would strengthen our relationship, and for a while, it appeared that way. Fast forward another year, and we'd gotten engaged, first time intimacy also happened during this stage, I was fortunate enough to be able to buy a house for us courtesy of an inheritance from my late uncle. Things were going great, and I have seriously suggested we plant a peach tree, important for later on, to signify new beginnings, and she was all for it. We were wedded not long after that, quite frankly, it was amazing. Of course, we had our normal ups and downs like every married couple, but I considered us lucky because she always made it a point to never go to bed upset with each other, and she would always point out gently if I did anything to upset her. Sometime later, life basically happened, and I was promoted at my job, it meant more pay but also meant I would be traveling more for work conferences and business meetings. I noticed she had been getting down a lot more and wasn't being as intimate as before. She would keep her phone close to her and even stop gently addressing things that upset her. I tried to talk to her about it, but she assured me that she was fine and that this was a phase she was going through, and, having no reason not to trust her, I let it go. She would sometimes go to her sister's place and spend the night telling me she just needed a bit of girl time with her sister, the day I got that fateful phone call was when she was meant to be keeping her sister company again. I remember rushing into the hospital, barely breathing, and frantically asking about my wife when the world's most understanding and patient police officer sat me down to explain what happened. He told me he was a friend of my SAL, and he happened to respond to a domestic disturbance call, he arrived on the scene to find a couple fighting. The supposed boyfriend was on top of the female, punching her, and she was screaming, trying to scratch him, this didn't make any sense to me because 1, this had nothing to do with my wife because we're married and 2, literally everyone who knew my wife knew she wouldn't do that. He gave me a knowing look and placed his hand on my shoulder, then told me to be very calm because said girlfriend was actually my wife. If it weren't for the severity of the situation, I would have laughed in his face, but something in the way he said everything made me believe him, I was then ushered in by a nurse to see my wife, and what greeted me to this day I still can hardly find the words to describe it. I just stood there for what seemed like an eternity, and then a doctor came and explained her injuries to me. The jaw was slightly fractured, her left eye was completely swollen shut, and she had massive bruising covering half of her face, as well as three broken ribs. Then the doctor dropped another bomb and told me she was pregnant, I still couldn't understand how this happened, and then I caught sight of her sister. She at first tried to avoid me, but at the persuasion of her police officer friend, she told her what she knew, it turns out my wife's ex had gotten in contact with her five months ago. He was doing this redemption pyramid step thing where he would apologize to people he is wrong to clear his karma, anyone else be.s meter going crazy right now. They began talking more, and then he convinced her to meet for coffee and show her he was a changed man. Obviously, old feelings resurfaced, coupled with the fact that he appeared changed now. It soon developed into an emotional affair, my wife approached her sister for advice, who told her to take things slowly and get it out of her system if she needed to, which then led to a physical affair three months later. She told my wife that she should at least make peace with her ex in whatever form it may be and even offered to cover for my wife occasionally. My Sael was in tears at this point and kept apologizing to me, saying that she didn't know about the abuse as my wife never told anyone other than me and her therapist at the time about it. I was numb, I couldn't feel anything, and I was absolutely dumbfounded by my wife's actions. When my wife finally woke up, I was there, and she burst into tears upon seeing me. I spent the following months in zombie flight mode, there was individual counseling for her as well as marriage counseling for us at the strong urging of her family. In counseling, she was surprisingly forthcoming about how it happened and how she absolutely hated herself for causing me pain. She mentioned how, at one point on her way home from his place, she actually fantasized about driving into the river because she smelt like him and didn't want his scent to corrupt me, however that made sense. 
She said she then tried to end it but was too weak and only after learning that she was pregnant that it actually woke her up and made her realize that any further contact with this man was toxic to not only her but the unborn child as well hence went to end things in person for good when he snapped on her. She became a shell of herself and developed a phobia for any other male but me. At one point, she couldn't even use the bathroom at night unless I was holding her hand, sad, right? After the baby was born, son, by the way, we got a paternity test, and he was mine, but the more time I spent with her, the more I realized I didn't hate my wife, I actually loathed her. I couldn't see the woman I married but saw his leftovers instead. Each time I looked at her, I decided to leave because I was afraid I'd do something I'd regret and be exactly like her abusive ex. She begged me not to leave and even made the ridiculous offer of giving me a hall pass, as well as slapping her if I wanted to, I knew at this point I had to get out. She was very generous during the divorce, she moved back into her parents and signed a well-thought-out co-parenting plan issued by the courts. Moving forward, three years later, I met my now fiancé by chance, I was in a bookstore with a buddy of mine, and we were discussing Egyptian mythology when this beautiful woman approached me to correct me on my pronunciations of the Egyptian gods and cities. Needless to say, I am immensely impressed by her understanding and the fact that she is Egyptian herself. We exchanged numbers, which eventually led us to date, when I finally proposed to her, it was actually in front of the peach tree I had planted years ago. I got down on one knee, but before I got my answer, she ran into the house and came out with a ring. Turns out she was actually planning on proposing herself because she was madly in love with me, and she didn't want any other woman to have me. In all his sweet, childlike innocence, my son told his mother what happened because he was present. My ex literally showed up that night in the rain yelling about how could I propose to her, my fiancé, in front of our tree and that this isn't the end of us. I am completely exhausted at this point, I cannot go to NC because she is the mother of my child, but she is basically harassing me and my fiancé. How do I convince her to move on, to get over her fear of men, and not force me to get a restraining order? Sorry it was long, but I am really desperate. Edit, I wanted to ask the insightful women of Reddit a question. Something that still bugs me to this day is the fact that she even made time for her ex, who took pleasure in destroying her, only for her to suffer a much worse fate. Is it normal for the abused to want the attention of the abuser even if she might hate him, something my ex said once? Edit 2, I forgot to add this in the original post, when my fiancé presented me with the ring she would use to propose to me, she had an engraving on the inner band that stated to my pharaoh. Damn, I love this woman.